Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to get the file name from SQL Server table and then import those files using SSIS. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Ash Chaudhary and the question was that I have an execute SQL task which will determine what the file name will be then only this file must be loaded from a folder with many files within it. At the moment my package is loading all the files not just the one file based on the execute SQL task variable assignment. So let's see how we can do this. So in my D files location I have three files at the moment. We will be loading only just maybe one file or maybe two file or three files based on the value from the SQL server table. Or you can just import one file it's up to you okay but I will make the package so that if you want to import more than one file then you can also import and if you want to just import one file then you can also import only that particular file and the path of the file will be situated inside the SQL server table. So let me open the SSMS. So we will be using the file info table here. I have created a file info table with ID as an identity and then there will be a process name so that the same table can be used for multiple packages and then it will store the file path and the active flag. So if you want to load the file then you can set the active flag as 1 and if you do not want to load the file then you can set the active flag to 0. And we will be using the audit log table as well so that we know like which package has loaded which file and how many records got loaded and when the package got executed. So we will use the audit log table and the file info table and we will be importing the data into the email table so at the moment the email table is empty okay maybe I can show you the data so if I open this file for example email.csv so it contains like person's id first name last name email and gender information and this file contains 1000 records okay and if I show you the 15% file so I think it contains 1400 something records yeah 1433 records because the first record is the header information so we can import any of the file or all of the file. Alright so at the moment both the tables are empty. So before loading the data we need to insert the entries of the files into the file info table. So maybe I can write a simple insert statement insert into file info and I want to load the file. So the process name I can call anything like email data load and the file path I need to provide here. So initially maybe I can just try importing just one file maybe this one 15%.csv file I want to import out of these three files. So I can just place the file name here and the active flag will be one okay. So I can just insert this data into the SQL server table and maybe I can insert one more records but I won't be loading the another file for now. So I can just copy the 85% file name as well so that you know that we won't be importing that file so we can set the active flag to 0 for this file okay so now our table contains the information of two files you know 15% and 85% and I want to import the 15% file okay so how I can select the data I'm interested only in the uh, file path so I can just select file path from file info where active flag equal to 1 and uh, process name equal to this one email data load because you can use the same table for multiple processes yeah so this will return the file name so now what I can do I can go back to my SSIS package so this is my blank SSIS package that I will be using today and now because we want to look through multiple results set from this particular table so we will be using the for each loop container with edu enumerator so I can go back to the SSIS package and I can just create couple of variables here the first variable I will call it as file path and it will contain the path of the file okay so I can give an initial value to this particular variable and maybe I can give the value as email.csv okay so I can copy the file path from here maybe I can copy the emails.csv so I can copy the value from here and I can paste it here okay another variable I will be using is the obj file path this object variable will contain the values of the multiple rows multiple or single rows those will be written from the SQL server table so so when this particular query will run in the SSMS like if I show you for example this query so it is returning multiple result set okay so if single value will return or multiple value will return so all those value will be inserted into the object file path variable okay the type will be object variable so these two variables are fine 
now to insert the number of records loaded we can create another variable and i can call the variable as records inserted okay so i can close the variables pane and now the first task that we will be using is the execute sql task and in the execute sql task we will actually get the file names to load get the file names to load all right now we can configure this one and we can create a OLDB connection manager new connection my tables exist in the test database on the SQL Server 2017 instance so I will select this connection so I can click on OK under SQL statement I can just select this query so I can copy the query from here and I can paste it here click OK now under result set we need to select full result set then we can click on full result set click on add under result set name we can give the name as 0 and then we can select the object variable that can hold multiple values from the SQL Server table. So I can click on OK. Now we can use the for each loop container here. So I can just drag and drop the for each loop container and I can connect the execute SQL task with the for each loop container and I can configure the for each loop container here. Under collection, under the enumerator type, we will select it to for each loop ADU enumerator and then we can select the object variable from here. We can go to the variable mapping and we can select the file path because for each iteration the value of the current file will be assigned to the file path SSIS variable. Now I can click on OK. So we are good here so far. So to import a file we will be using the data flow task. So I can just drag and drop the data flow task into the for each loop container. OK. And then I can configure the data flow task. Because we want to import the data from a CSV file so we will be using a flat file source here. So I can just drag and drop the flat file source into the data flow task and now I can right click and configure the flat file source I can click new to create a flat file connection manager and I can call the connection manager as flat file I can browse the file so from the file type I will select CSV file and I can select any file from here click open column names in the first data if you click on the preview so you can see the data here so the data seems good here so we can click on ok ok so we have configured the flat file source now we want to import this data into a SQL Server table email. So we can use the OLEDB destination to insert the data into the SQL Server table. Then I can connect the flat file source. But before connecting the flat file source with the OLEDB destination, we can actually use the row count transformation so that we know like how many records got loaded. So I can connect the flat file source with the row count transformation and then I can configure the row count transformation. I have created a variable records inserted. So I will select the variable name from here. Click OK. Now connect the row count transformation with the OLEDB destination and then I can configure the OLEDB destination here. Now under name of the table or view, I can select the email table from here and then click on mappings. So the mapping seems good, click on OK. So it is saying that failure inserting into the read only column ID. So it means like in my table, the ID column is of type identity. So that's why it won't be inserting the data into the identity column. Okay, so maybe I can just uncheck this one. If in your table it is not of identity type, then you can just map all the columns. So I can click on OK here. So this is good. Now our package is mostly ready, but the thing is that this connection, flat file connection manager, this connection is hard coded as of now. Even though in the for each loop container the value of the file path will change, but that file path we need to assign to the connection string property of the flat file connection manager so that the flat file connection manager can point to a new file every time the for each loop container will loop through a new file so if you want to make the connection manager is dynamic then you can right click on it go to the properties and then you can click on expressions and from here you can select the connection string property and then you can just assign the value from the file path okay so what will happen that when the for each loop container will run so for each iteration the value of the file path will change and that value will be assigned to the connection string property of the flat file connection manager and the flat file will point to that new file every time so i can click on ok so now our ssis package is almost ready that it can import any file that will return from the sql server table you know from this one file info and the only thing that i want to do is that i want to add the auditing as well so that i know like which file got loaded so for that I can just drag and drop the execute SQL task into the for each loop container and then I can just configure the execute SQL task. So maybe I can call this one as logging and I can just configure this one right click click edit select the connection manager and now because you want to use the SSIS variables inside the insert query like the file name SSIS variable and the records inserted 
so we need to write the code in the expression so i can go to the expressions and then i can select the sql statement source and here i can write the insert query so i can maximize this one and now we can write an insert query so for example if you want to insert the data into the audit log then how will write the insert query insert into audit log select the package name so maybe i can get the you know package name so i can write the package name for for now package name dot ttsx we will get the package name from the system variable okay so that's not an issue and then we need to get the file path okay and then we need to get the records inserted and we need to get the current date time so this is how the insert query will look like so i can just copy this query from here and i can put a double quote paste the query and the double quote i can share this query with you as well so that uh, you can use it in your package if you want now instead of the package name we can just get the value from the system variable so double quote plus plus double quote and then we can get the value from the system variable package name so if you will change the package name then that value will be changed here as well okay. and of course you need to change the name property of the package so if you right click on the control flow and if you check the name property then there is a name property of the package so you need to change the package name there inside the name property now we need to get the value of the file path ssis variable so we can just put a double quote plus plus double quote and then we can just drag and drop the file path ssis variable here okay so this is good now for the records inserted we can put double quote plus plus double quote and then we can just drag and drop the records inserted variable here okay so now everything is fine the only thing is that this records inserted this variable is of type integer okay and if you are going to use the integer variable inside an expression then we need to type cast it to a string okay so we can just expand the type cast and we can type cast it to dt underscore wstr okay and we can provide a length here so maybe i can provide the length as 20 so this is good i can click on evaluate expression so the expression evaluated successfully so i can click on okay 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 so our package is ready and as of now if i will try to import the file so it should import the 15 percent dot csv file and even though at this particular location there are multiple files so let me start executing the package all right so you can see that it has imported the 15 percent file because in that file we have the 1433 records okay so if you check the data now in the email table it should contain 1433 records and if you check the audit log table so you can see that this is the package name because i have not changed the package name here so if i click on view solution explorer so this is the package name and this is the file loaded 15 percent and these are the number of records loaded and the time when the file was loaded so this loaded the file according to the uh, this file info table now suppose if you want to import another file for example if you want to import uh, emails.csv file so maybe i can just put an entry for this file as well and uh, yeah this one so if you check even though right now the 15 percent file is enabled so what i can do i can just disable that file and i can enable another file so i can set it like set active flag equal to zero and then i can set the active flag to one uh, for the emails.csv file which contains 1000 records okay and i can write a condition where file path equal to this value okay so i can execute this query and now if i select the data now so it will import the emails.csv file and let me just clean the email table so right now the email table is empty all right so now the email table should be loaded so i can just go back to ssis package and i can just re-execute the ssis package so the package ran fine and it should have inserted 1000 records yeah so you can see that it has inserted 1000 records and you can check the counts in the email table now we have the 1000 records and you can check the audit log table as well so it has inserted emails.csv file this time and the number of records loaded are 1000 yeah, so i think this is how you can just use the ssis package to import a particular set of files or even a single file and the file name will return from a sql server table okay yeah so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much